The United States has a growing number of young people who are disconnected, uneducated, impoverished, and unable to succeed. Roca seeks out the most difficult, challenging individuals for whom other programming has failed, and systemically works to establish positive, consistent relationships built on trust and respect. At the end of the day, we are all connected. Here's the story of Bernard Gatson and Chelsea City Manager Jay Ash. I met Jay Ash. It was one night. It was freezing out, and uh, and I was asking for a ride home. It was like nine o'clock at night. I was working the night shift, and then I seen Jay Ash. I heard uh, this big voice out in the hallway. Hey, hey, you're gonna give me a ride? And, he, and Bernard was out there talking to uh, one of the counselors. Never knew Bernard. Uh, he was like, Oh, you want? Well, you want a ride home? No, no, nothing about me. He said, I said, Oh, you give me a ride home? I said, oh, All right. I take a ride home. So, so. Um, Bernard and I got in the car and we started to get into a discussion, and it was um, it was a nice discussion. I learned a little bit about him, and then I said, "Well, you know, tell me your, tell me your real story." And he said, "Well, I was arrested." And then uh, I said, "What were you arrested for?" And he said, uh, "Attempted murder." And I said, "Oh man, only at Roca." Broke it down to him like, "Listen, yeah, I, I was accused of attempted murder. Um, that wasn't so. I, I was guilty by association and the people I put myself around. I didn't I didn't do the crime, but because of the company I kept, I I was." I ended up in jail for it. You know? Only at Roca could I be in the middle of the night in a place where I don't know where I'm going and I have somebody next to me who's been arrested for attempted murder. Um, it was the best best ride I ever had. So, and Jay Ash was like, oh yeah, he gave me opinions on things and he was like, well, he really gave me a chance instead of pulling over and saying, get out of my car. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what he could have done. And the thing that impressed me was um, that um, Bernard hadn't, had not only not given up hope, but was all full of vision for what he could do in the future. And it was really inspiring to be with a guy who had every right to be upset with our society and instead turned it around to be a positive and said, you know, this is a learning experience for me and I'm going to make a difference not only in my life but in the lives of other people so what happened to me don't, doesn't happen to other people and um, I can grow and be a better person. I think the biggest thing in life is knowing that we're all connected. You know, there's no accidents. There's no coincidences. I'm not me standing here an individual. I'm me standing here as an individual connected to the larger whole. There's a thread that we can't see, but it's there. So if I don't feel the pain of this child that's been aban abandoned, that has been underserved, that I'm not human. Rooka's youth workers do not wait for high-risk young people to show up at their doors, because they never will. Youth workers are relentless and show up day after day, no matter what. These relationships are then used as a vehicle to push young people towards goals of social and educational engagement. It is this relationship that awakens hope. Just getting these guys into programming and getting them to a place where they know that change is possible, it's, a, it's an uphill battle, especially in the first six months. It's, it's key that I build a nice foundation because um, at, at a certain point, it's time for me to push the relationship. I used to be real hard-headed. He kept coming to my house, knocking on my door, window, throw, like trying to get me to get up. You know, if you, and sometimes my grandma let him in, came right in my room, woke me up, <laughs> dragged me right out of bed. Like, come on, we going, we going to Roca, do your GD, this and the third. Good to him, I, you know, for that motivation actually, you know, made me get my GD. I received it in last February. So he actually pushed me to do something really positive. Truth. United States incarceration rates are currently the highest in the world, five times higher than the average rates in most developed countries. Challenges. I think difficult truth just simply means uh, to, to meet the challenges that are presented every day, and, uh, and we cannot run from them. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, what I'm so proud about is that we've had a real problem in our city in terms of uh, dealing with troubled youth. And, uh, and I call high-risk youth. And uh, uh, again, uh, kids, uh, young people that have no stake in our system. And I'm so proud of the fact that uh, we've joined with ROCA to meet that challenge. Truth. It has become clear to the criminal justice system that new alternatives must be sought for dealing with the heavy burden of ballooning incarceration costs. The difficult truth for public safety is we're confronted with the ugly side of life many times. It's a violent side, it's a side that seems irrational in many instances. And uh, that's a difficult truth to face every day. And um, the difficult truth is that we don't always have answers. It, it is absolutely senseless. I mean, how many times you turn the news on every day? And even the news media, they sensationalize the fact that 
bad things are happening, and I know why they do it, but we're left to try to make sense of it all. You know, once the headline's over with, our work doesn't stop. It's really just starting. Truth. The average lifetime expenses of social services and incarceration for a high-risk individual is between $250,000 to $2 million. When you look at what we're talking about, helping society save money, finding ways to curb prison laws, finding ways to keep people out of prison, finding ways to save society all that money, you find a hard time believing that both the Republicans and the Democrats and the independents alike couldn't all agree that that's something that's necessary for our country. The biggest problem that we're facing is that if it doesn't affect me, then I don't get upset about it. At ROCA, if it upsets the community, it upsets the individual. We all have to take responsibility. We all have to do our part because that's the big picture. Another difficult truth is um, for the for you know f for the kids that Roca helps is them coming kind of to terms a lot of times with what they've done, you know, and that's it's hard because you know it's you're there for a reason, <laughs> and you know it's a difficult truth sometimes to come to to come to grips with that. And, and the time is now to implement solutions that will keep our young people both alive and out of prison. Uh, like I was saying, uh, I'm more occupied, so I stay out of trouble. The um, me being in school and work it has made me more mature, and like the way I I take the constructive criticism that the staff here give me, like it helps me better myself. Well, I keep coming back to Roca just because I like what I'm doing. I'm not in the streets. Um, my time is occupied enough to where I don't want to go back to the streets. I'm helping people. I'm doing better. I don't have to worry about going to jail, getting in trouble, getting shot, getting killed. I'm occupying my time with classes and teaching kids and helping kids and helping the community. Corrections reform is not an easy undertaking, but as we now know, it is both necessary and possible. And for Massachusetts, it is no longer a question of what needs to be done, but when are we willing to start?